Hey everybody! In today's video, we are going to be looking at how Google Sheets can be used to solve for various chi-squared tests. If you need a review of what chi-squared tests are and the math that is used for it, be sure to check out my previous video titled Chi-Squared Test Application in Biology, which also explores how to use this test when analyzing data from biological experiments. The first chi-squared test that we'll be exploring is a goodness of fit test, which is used when you are measuring a single categorical variable in a single population, often to evaluate whether sample data is representative of the full population. For example, let's say we have a bag of M&Ms and we want to test if the distributions of its colors is equal to what the company claims the distributions of colors is. Our null hypothesis would be that the distribution of color is as the company claims, and the alternative hypothesis is that the distribution is not as the company claims. We observe that in our M&M bag that there is 152 brown M&Ms, 114 yellow M&Ms, 106 red M&Ms, 51 orange M&Ms, 43 green M&Ms, and 43 blue M&Ms. It is expected, however, based on the company's reports, that 30% of any given bag of M&Ms will be brown, 20% will be yellow, 20% red, 10% orange, 10% green, and another 10% blue. We can represent this information in Google Sheets by first setting up a single table that represents our observed and expected values in an easily readable way, as shown here. It's important to note that in our expected M&M counts, we are only representing the percentage of the M&Ms that are expected to be of a certain color. In order to continue with our chi-square test calculation, we must convert these percentages into whole numbers, which is done first by calculating how many total M&Ms are in our observed bag. Luckily for us, there is a function in Google Sheets that allows us to calculate the sum of numbers in a given row of cells. To use this function, you need to type the equal bar into a cell, where a list of mathematical functions and suggestions for equations to use will show up based on how you name the cells in your spreadsheet. Here we see that the sum of rows B2 to B7 is automatically populated, and once we press enter or click on the suggestion, the sum of these cells are calculated and shown to be 509. From there, we can convert the percentage of our expected M&M counts into whole numbers. Using our equals symbol again to designate our use of an inbuilt Google Sheets function, we first divide the first expected percentage of 30% for brown M&Ms by 100, clicking on cell C2 to tell the function which value we will be dividing. We then multiply this value by the total amount of M&Ms that we just calculated. If we press enter, then we see that our expected M&M count for the brown M&Ms is 152.7. We can repeat the same process manually for every other color of M&M, clicking on the respective cell that showcases the expected percentage of the color in any given bag of M&Ms, converting it back into a decimal and multiplying it by the total amount of M&Ms in our observed bag. However, there is a shortcut to this process as well. Instead of manually entering these values into each cell, we can grab the blue little toggle bar at the bottom right corner of our cell and highlight the following cells, which essentially copy and paste the equation we made in our first cell to every other cell. However, when copying this equation over, the row value of each cell is incremented by 1, which is why the output of the following cells are 0, because while the respective percentages are being divided by 100, they are always being multiplied by 0. To fix this problem, we place a dollar sign in front of the 8 in B8, which tells Google Sheets to not increment the row value for each cell, and instead keep the row value constant. If we copy over the equation again, we see that we're able to get the same integer values for our expected count as we did when computing each cell's equation manually. Now that our observed and expected values are properly computed and formatted, we can go ahead and use the chi-squared equation to solve for our problem. Remember that to solve for the chi-squared statistic, we must find the sum of every observed value minus this expected value squared over the expected value. We can represent this in our table by first subtracting the expected count of every M&M color from its observed count, squaring the result and dividing it by the expected value again. This is shown in this first cell, where we use the equal sign again to note that we will be creating a function, clicking on the observed count of the brown M&Ms, cell B2, subtracting it from the expected count of the brown M&Ms, cell D2, squaring the result, and dividing the final value by expected brown M&M counts in cell D2. Once we hit enter, we can see the value of this equation as well as a suggested autofill for the remaining cells. If you'd like to, you can go cell by cell and fill out the remaining cells manually using techniques that we discussed previously. But for now, I'm going to accept the autofill suggestions. Now to find the final chi-squared test statistic, we have to find the total of all the previous cells using the sum function we discussed previously. 
Now that we found our test statistic, we have to interpret it in the context of our problem to understand what the values mean. The information we need to know to solve this problem includes determining the significance level for our problem. Let's choose a 1% level of significance so that we have a lot of evidence to prove if the company was lying or not about the m and color distribution. Next, we have to determine our degrees of freedom for this problem, which for chi-square tests of goodness and fit are the total categorical variables minus 1. In this case, our categorical variables are the m and colors, and since there are 6 possible values, our degrees of freedom is 5. Next, we have to determine our p-value, which is the probability of observing a sample statistic as extreme as our chi-square test statistic. To do so, we use an inbuilt function called chi-dist, whose description is to calculate the right-tailed chi-square distribution based on the value of our chi-square test statistic and the degrees of freedom in our problem. Once we press enter, we get our calculated p-value, which can convert to a percentage by pressing the percent symbol in the upper left-hand corner of our tools bar. Since our p-value is greater than our significance level of 1%, we fail to reject our null hypothesis that the distribution of color is as the company claims, as we can expect to find a sample distribution this far or farther from the expected distribution in about 53.64% of samples, which happens often enough at the 1% significance level to attribute to chance. Now let's see how we can use Google Sheets to solve chi-square tests for independence, which determines whether there's an association between multiple categorical variables, basically whether the variables are independent or related. Let's say an operations manager of a company that manufactures tires wants to determine whether there are any differences in the qualities of work among the three daily shifts. She randomly selects 496 tires and carefully inspects them. Each tire is either classified as perfect, satisfactory, or defective, and the shift that produced it is also recorded. The two categorical variables of interest are the shift and condition of the tire produced. The observed data is given to us in the problem and can be summarized by the following two-way table that we can create using the formatting and input functions of Google Sheets that we explored in our previous problem. We're asked to see if the data provides sufficient evidence at the 5% significance level to infer that there are differences in quality among the three shifts, with our null hypothesis being that there are no differences in the quality of work among the three daily shifts, while the alternative hypothesis is that there is a difference in the quality of work among these shifts. Before we continue with this problem, we have to first calculate the expected count of our variables. To find the expected value for each cell, we have to multiply its respective row total with the respective column total and divide it by the total sample size. So, for cell B77, which represents the expected count of perfect quality tires made during shift 1, we would use the equal sign to create a function and multiply E71 with B74, as it represents the row total of shift 1 tires and column total of perfect tires, respectively. We then divide this value by 496, which represents the total number of tires that were inspected by the operations manager. This gets us an expected value of approximately 97.8. If we were to try to use our shortcut method by copying our equation into the other cells, we will see we get an error returned instead, notably a dividing by zero error. This is because, similar to last time, copying the function had caused the row and column values to increment by 1, and so like last time, we have to use the dollar symbol to a. keep the column value constants so that we only get the totals from column E, b. the row values constants so that we can only get our totals from row 74, and c. the entire E74 cell constant as we always want to divide our expected values by the tire sample size of 496. Now if we use our blue toggle bar to select all the expected value, we see the error disappear, and our totals of the expected values match the observed total values, proving that our math was correct. One formatting tip, if the decimals seem to take too much space in our tables, we can use these buttons in our toolbar to reduce or increase the decimal places in the cell. We can copy this formatting to the other cells again by using the blue toggle bar. Now we can calculate the chi-square test statistic by using the same equation we explored in our last problem and creating a similar chi-square statistic table. This is shown in this first cell where we use the equal sign again to note that we will be creating a function, clicking on the observed count of the perfect tires made during shift 1, cell B71, subtracting it from the expected count of the perfect tires made in shift 1, cell B77, and squaring the result and dividing the final value by the expected count of perfect tires made during shift 1 in cell B77. Luckily, this time when we copy the functions to the other cells, we do not receive any errors and do not have to edit the function to include constants. Now, our final chi-square test statistic is represented by the sum of these values, which is 8.65. 
Now that our final chi-square test statistic is found, we have to interpret it in the context of our problem to understand what this value means. In this scenario, we'll be using a 5% significance level to compare our calculated p-value against. To calculate the degrees of freedom needed, we need to multiply one less of our total number of rows by one less of our total number of columns. Since there are three columns, categorical variables describing the quality of our tires, perfect, satisfactory, and defective, and three row categorical variables describing the shift number, one, two, or three, our total degrees of freedom is four. To determine the p-value, we use chi-dist again, and the cells k77 and h80, which represents the chi-square test statistic and degrees of freedom for our problem, respectively. Since our p-value ends up being 7.06%, which is again greater than our significance level, we fail to reject the null hypothesis that there are no differences in the quality of work among the three daily shifts. I hope this video helped you to learn how to use the chi-square test with Google Sheets.